Older men have to have gone through enough work themselves to be healthy, to be emotionally intelligent, and then model that for young men. It's not the father's job to do that. A lot of mistakes were made early on thinking that the father should be the one to show me how to be a man, how to be emotional, how to be responsible, and how to be strong, and that is not the case. There's too much tension embedded between the father and the son. So men at this conference, they have to do the work and then model that for somebody else's son and vice versa. An uncle can teach a young man a lot more than a father can. A mentor can teach a lot more than a father can. So these young men have to turn someplace really to see what it means to be a man. Because still even today, most households are governed by women or it's 50% uh, of the households are single of, uh, uh, mother raising their son. So this becomes even more important for men to step up, do their work, and then become a template or a model to enter into the masculine world in a, in a strong but dignified and graceful way. Um, if a man does not deal with the wound that his father gave him, either through his absence, his abuse, his neglect, if he does not deal with that wound, then he will turn other men into would-be fathers. And that will preclude him from having a mentor. See. If you come to me and say, John, I want you to mentor me, I can do that real easily if you have done most of your father work. If not, eventually you'll start putting the desires and the hungers that you have of the father on me, on Robert Bly, on somebody. And that's why mentors are so hard to find. Most men, well, not at this conference, actually. There's so many men here that have done 20, 30 years of work on themselves and have become really good mentors. Every man is different. Every man is different. That's one reason why um, Robert sort of intuitively uh, set these conferences up where there was always five or six or seven teachers present because no one teacher can usher every man into their masculinity or, or into their manhood. Um, Maladoma Somme is going to speak to some of the men, and other men are going to sit there and not understand what he said. And, and Martin Shaw is going to speak to some men, and the men who related to Maladoma is going to say, I don't understand what Martin is saying, nor John Lee or, or whoever. So by virtue of having multiple teachers, you have, therefore have multiple resources that can help you find your way. Um, everything from psychological work, uh, emotional release work, intellectual work, mythopoetic work, which predominates this conference here in Minnesota, uh, recovery work, which I was kind of, kind of noted for as men's recovery, getting them out of alcohol and drug addiction long enough and stable enough then to do the, the work of the father. Well, like I said, it, it's really important that every man understands it's not the father's job to make us a man. There's too much inherent tension, usually between the son and the mother and, and those feelings. The father, very often, if he hasn't done a lot of work, will feel like a sibling uh, rival to his son instead of the, the man in the house. Forgiveness is, is uh, not my department. I, 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 I'm happy to say that I did enough work to get to a place of forgiveness for my own father who was very abusive, uh, alcoholic, um, put me down in every kind of way possible, demeaned me, demoralized me but uh, worked, a lot of physical, emotional release work, uh, a 
lot of writing letters and sobbing and grieving and getting angry. And I can say that I did get to forgive my dad. But I've worked with some men who were damaged so badly that forgiveness probably just is not in the cards for them this lifetime. And if the Baptists are right, this is it. Now, if the Hindus are right, you can come back and work on it again. But if the Baptists are right, this is it. But I have worked with men. Now, I have never forgotten what my father has done to me. Never. But it doesn't run my life like it did in my 20s and early 30s and late 30s. Um, but I spent hundreds of hours at these conferences and, and in therapy and every kind of workshop you could attend, I attended trying to heal the various wounds that had been bequeathed to me both from father and mother. Well, the task of the Father, in regards to what you're talking about, the task of the Father is to bring their son to something like this conference. Uh, the task of the Father, I remember at one point my wife and I uh, looked like we were going to have a child, and uh, uh, this man who I respect a, a great deal named Jeffrey Duvall out in Colorado, he and I were teaching at a men's conference. and. And when I found that out, I said, now, you know, when he's 12 or 13, I'll be sending him to you <laughs> for a while. And he said, oh, yeah, and I'll be glad to take him for a while. That's my job, is to know when that time comes <laughs> to purchase the airline ticket and send him to Jeffrey. And then Jeffrey's job would be then to educate him in ways that I never would be able, no matter how much men's work I've done. So it's just a matter of knowing when who to connect them with, uh, and again, that's part of what these conferences are about. Uh, there's many men at the Mentone Conference, this conference, who, who connected with somebody else's son and stayed connected for 20 years. Well, in Mentone, uh, Robert Bly and I did 16 years there together. And we, we, I have to say, we did a pretty good job of, of fostering this at that conference. Uh, we had young men brought by their fathers or their uncles or surrogate uncles come in at 11 and 12 years old. And at 20, they were still coming. And they were running the small groups for the 11 and 12 and 13-year-old men. And we would have very often, we had very, this conference too, uh, grandfather, father, son, two brothers, <laughs> you know, sometimes five, six, seven in one biological family, which is just, just unbelievably beautiful. You'll hear things in a conference or in a men's uh, weekend out in the woods or stuff. You'll hear things, see things, and feel things that other men will bring up that you'll get to sort of draft on like a car behind a semi. Uh, they'll take you along to places through their work that you would not go on your own or ever think to go. And even though I've been doing therapy with men for 30 years, I wouldn't think to take you there either. We would go someplace else. But the men, combined with the nature, combined with the wind, combined with the singing, combined with the grieving, uh, combined with the laughter, is going to take you places that one-on-ones just can't go.